MLB The Show is your home for postseason baseball. It's game one of the American League Championship Series between the Tampa Bay Rays and the Minnesota Twins. Hi again, everyone. Matt Vaskersian. Welcome to our special postseason coverage of baseball on the show. With me is Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak. And Dan, we'll start with you. This series has the feel of one that's about to get very interesting. Well, here's a little comparison of these two teams. Looking at it earlier, to me, the story is all about the pitching. Both squads have some good arms, and the team that gets the best outings are probably going to come out on top. The postseason is officially in full swing. Lineups and first pitch coming up next. Kenta Maeda gets the ball for game one of the league championship series here at home. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, Kenta Maeda, you're going to see a lot of off-speed pitches from Maeda. 88 to 91 miles an hour, not a terrific fastball, good split finger, good slider. He's one of those guys that pitches backwards. What do I mean by that, Matt? He'll throw fastballs in breaking ball situations, and he'll throw off-speed pitches when he's behind the count. 2-0 or 2-1, he pitches backwards. Won't commit on the slider. Good patience, and it's full 3-2. fouled away and we'll see some 40s before things are said and done tonight right now 51 degrees at first pitch the payoff pitch one more time weak grounder back to the mound and that's out number one batting tough Number eight. Now batting, Brandon Lau. He'll get to take his first cuts here. The 1 1 home. Waves and misses for strike number two. So let's take a look at our umpire and crew in this one. Behind the plate is Joe McDonald. Hey, Joe McDonald, he's a tough guy to figure out sometimes, D Row. One inning, he'll be given that inside corner. The next inning, he doesn't give much of that inside corner. His zone fluctuates a lot. You know, Dan, you can see some definite confusion on the face of some hitters today. Questioning in the strike zone. One pitch is a strike on the outer half. The next time, it's a ball. Kind of a little cat and mouse with the umpire when you should be focused on the pitcher. The 2 2 one more time. It is swung on and missed, strike three. That swing tells me he was really trying to get a pitch out front and rip it down the line, but that wasn't a great pitch to do it on. It's really not the best two-strike approach either. To the plate now, Joey Wendell. Now a foul tip that's held onto with the plate, and the count moves to one and two now. Swing and a miss, and that ends the inning. Down in order go the Rays. And now the Twins will go to work on offense. We've got no score. Charlie Morton will do the pitching on the road here in game one of the LCS. 
Dan, any thoughts? Boy, Charlie Morton has really made a name for himself. Big arm and a big fastball. Good sinking fastball, too. 95 to 98 miles an hour. Big overhand curveball. He's very valuable, too. He's had a lot of success pitching out of the bullpen and also one of the top starting pitchers in the league right now. One one. Two balls. One strike. Oh, and he can't come up with it. Particularly graceful there, and as a result, he'll be slapped with an E4 on the play. Josh Donaldson digging in now in prior outings against Charlie Morton, batting at an even 400. Ready now with the payoff pitch. Hit hard to the right side, but foul. Another full count pitch home. Hit high and deep out there to left center field. Kiermeyer looks up, and goodbye. This one ain't coming back. Two-run shot to left center. His first homer so far in the series. And the Twins have taken a two-to-nothing lead. That's how the manager drew it up right there. Hold the visiting team scoreless and then grab a huge home run in the first. Blake now. Nelson Cruz. And he misses low here, so the count goes to three and one. It's clear he just hasn't been able to find any rhythm out there. Pretty much unable to hit any of his spots. And now he's at three and one, and he's put him into another great hitting count. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes. This one's also hit well. Deep down the right field line. Well, this will land foul as he didn't miss by much. He's got that certainly timed up now. I'd be shocked if the pitcher goes to the well three times in a row with off speed. Hopped up. Zunino is there. He's got it one away. Batting four. Noah Fielder. Eddie. Rosario. Digging in. Eddie Rosario. As he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Bases are empty, one man out. A pie, two and one now. Hey, if you're going to throw a pitch like that to this guy, that's right where you want to miss. Any lower, and he'll probably make you pay for it. it starts to go around here, but it doesn't matter. This is strike two anyway. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. Soft liner to the right side. In time to first, and there are two away. So stepping in, Luis Arias looking to get on base and keep this first inning alive. Two and two. Two out, nobody on. Line shot to third, and the side is retired. Some more of the colorful characters here at the ballpark tonight we're back with more of game one after this message and a word from our local stations
Here's the 1-1. One, one. Just off the outside that time, laid off for a ball. The 2-1. Skied in the air to straightaway left. And that'll get down for a base hit. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. This is exactly what you want to do when you've gone down by two runs. Answer the bell. So he leads off the next inning and gets them going with a double. Now if they can scratch a run or two across this inning, they'll be right back in this one. At the plate, Yoshi Tsutsugo rounded softly down the line toward first. But this will wind up a foul ball. Two and two. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first out. Now at the plate, Willie Adamas. Even at a ball and a strike, here's the pitch. And this one runs a little too far in, ball two. And it's two balls and two strikes now. Little hesitation right there by the batter. It was great execution by the pitcher down and away. But that looked like a late swing. Could have been sitting on something else. Count full, three balls and two strikes. Full count here. Here comes the pitch. And that misses ball four. So with one out, that'll at least set up the double play possibility here that could get them out of the inning. I'm sure the manager is fine with that. He tried to entice him with that 3-2 pitch, but he didn't take the bait. First base was open, though, so he just needs to make a good pitch for a ground ball. Two on here with one man out. And that means Kevin Kiermeyer will hit next. Ready with the 1-1 pitch. There's a swing and a ball lifted to left, but back in the seats, out of play. It's one and two. Oh, and you can tell he wanted to hold off, but he swings through the inside pitch anyway, and he becomes out number two. And with two away, let's check out our playoff bracket as we give you a look at how these two teams advanced out of the divisional round to meet here for the league championship. And that'll bring up Manuel Margot. Two's all over the place. Two on, two out, and of course, here in inning number two. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. Hey, time to start making some quality pitches. He finds himself in a tough spot behind an account with guys on base. Meadows on second. Adamas at first, two out in the inning. High in the air down the right field line. And foul. Fastball, and ooh, that ran in and drilled him. Well, no one really likes getting plunked by a pitch, but as long as it doesn't do too much damage, most guys will take it any day. A free pass can be a big deal if the guys behind you can make it hurt for the pitcher. Coming to the plate now, Mike Zanino, as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. The set and the 1-1. One -one. According to the career numbers on the back of his baseball card, Zanino has just over 100 career home runs to his credit. And he comes back to get him. So a great job pitching out of it with the bases loaded. Rays leave him loaded. They trail it here two to nothing. Here's Miguel Sano. One of the keys to securing a win, they want to keep the pressure on and try to build that lead as much as they can moving into the later innings. Now the 2-1 pitch. Takes a pass and misses. That's strike two.
Full count now, three and two. Byron Buxton waits on deck. Now the three and two pitch. He swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. Well, there's nothing like seeing a good power pitcher that has a good fastball. And what does he do? He just throws this good fastball right by, brings the express. No chance to put that ball in play. Standing in now, Byron Buxton. And he looks at ball four now. So he's aboard, and you always have to worry about the threat of the steal when he's on base. Man, the pitcher's wondering how he didn't get that call. Busted him inside on a 3-1 count, and the ump thought it was just a tad off the plate. Tough to get the benefit of the doubt from the umpire when you fall behind in a count like that, though. Pitch out here, but nothing's happening. Ball two. Runners on first with one down. Almost got him to go around, but instead it's ball three. I love the ability to hold up right there, especially with count leverage. I know you want to get aggressive in the strike zone. But he was able to notice that that wasn't his pitch. The three and one pitch. And now Kepler belts one, carrying well out to right field. And out of here. And I mean by plenty. That ball was crushed. A two run blast to straightaway right field. His first homer here in the series. As the Twins are looking good here, up four to nothing. Every home run is exactly the same. That ball was absolutely destroyed. Into the box now, Mitch Garver. Oh, they have him looking awfully confused up there right now. It's one and two. Made him look silly with that one. There's a curveball, but it misses well out of the zone. Yeah, and if you get a guy flailing at a pitch like that, heck, you're going to go out there and throw that same pitch until he proves he can lay off of it. Swing and a miss at the curveball, and there's your second out of the inning. It's never easy to rebound after serving up a two-run shot, but... That at bat was a good indication to me that he isn't letting it get to him. He went right after him for the strikeout. Stepping in now, Jorge Polanco. Just staying alive, putting together a really good at bat here. Bases are empty here with two men out. Got him swinging. Made him chase outside the zone that time, and that puts an end to the inning. A two-run score for the Twins, both coming on this two-run home run. We've played two, and the Twins have taken a 4-0 lead. And that'll bring in Yandi Diaz. He'll lead things off against Kenta Maeda. Lots of baseball left in this one as we're still early on, but you don't want to fall too far behind. They're already down by a bundle, and one of the things you want your leadoff guy to get on and set the table for the big boys to start driving in some runs. Hit out towards second. Throw to first in time, and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Brandon Lau looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at-bat. Yeah, and kind of shocked he got blown away with a fastball. You could tell he was late on that one. And we'll see if he tries to cheat to something this A.B. 
fastball strike three called as he couldn't pull the trigger and there are two away pretty clear he didn't like the call there on the outside part of the plate but probably too good to take and he's down on strikes for the second time yeah that pitch was right on the black beautiful pitch and even if we had robot umps he'd still be out but the only difference would be he wouldn't be able to complain about it in now Joey Wendell Started to chase there. They'll appeal it down to third and no swing. It's ball two. Two out, nobody on. And he struck him out. His seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. Rays go in order. One, two, three. They trail here four to nothing. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And standing in is the veteran third baseman, Josh Donaldson. The last at bat, Matty D. We heard this guy's a good fastball hitter. He got a fastball and didn't miss it. We'll see if they pitch him a little bit differently this time and mix in some off speed pitches. And good patience exercised as he works out the walk to lead off the home half of the third. And I'm sure the manager is just fine with that. I mean, it's better to battle a slugger like that to the end and end up walking him than serving one up where he can really hurt you. Here's Nelson Cruz now. He popped out in his first trip. Yeah, Matty, and it looked like he got fooled a little bit. A little bit out front, ended up popping out. Expect him to be a little bit more leery of the breaking pitch this A.B. Fouled away. Now a swing and a miss as he picks up another one. Make it four strikeouts already, and there's your first out. Pretty textbook breaking ball for the punch out right there. Got it to bend a lot, and by the time it got there, it had fallen completely out of the zone. Not much you can do with that pitch. At the plate now, Eddie Rosario. Well hit. Deep down the right field line. And that's going to wind up hooking just a bit foul. So a missed opportunity there. And he fouls this one off. And he lays off it to even the count two and two. He might have to look for a different way to put this guy away on two two. He's already seen the curveball a couple of times so he might be looking for it. Neither guy willing to give in, and the at bat will continue. The 2 2 one more time. He is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. The batter, number two. Digging in now, Luis Arias Luis. hit it hard but lined oh, out in oh, his yeah. first at bat. Yeah, pretty unlucky right there, Matty. Squared up a fastball nicely, and that's all you can do. You just want to be on time for the heater, and he's prepared for this next A.B. The one-two. Pretty good breaking ball to lay off of right there. If I'm pitching, I might think this guy might be sitting on something off speed. Two, two. And there's a base hit on the line. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Hey guys, he doubled up on that breaking ball. The batter obviously timed the first one. Second one, he is not going to let go. Good wood on that one, able to drive it for a base hit. To the plate now, Miguel Sano. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Some activity out in the bullpen now as a couple of left-handers begin to stir. Two down, runners at first and second. And the inning goes away in unceremonious fashion on a swing and a miss at a ball way outside the strike zone. Twin strand a pair, but they hold a four to nothing lead.
all set for the start of the fourth. And Austin Meadows will be the next to bat. Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. And he struck him out. And that's eight strikeouts thus far. I'll tell you, he looks really dialed in on the bump right How there. He's got a shutout going, and he really seems to have this lineup off balance. Even when he challenges them up in the zone, they don't have an answer for it. Into the box, Yoshi Tsutsugo. A little bit outside, two and one. Sitting in a good spot right here. Two ball, one strike count is yet to see a fastball. Have to be sitting on one right here. The 2 1 home he is swung on and missed, and that's strike two. Swung on in the dirt for the third strike. He makes the throw to first, two down. The batter, number one. He's really on a roll right now on the mound. Back to back strikeouts to wrap up the last inning, and now he started this frame with the same story. Four straight strikeouts in all. Stepping in, Willie Adamas. First two men in the inning have both gone down via the punch out, so we'll see if he can fare any better. Three and two now. No runs, just one hit, one error in the ballgame for Tampa Bay. Fouled off. Three, two, one more time. Hit hard on the ground a second, and that finds its way through for a base hit. There's a hard hit ground ball. Pitcher not able to get a glove on a hard single up the middle. Yeah, watch your lips right there, Dan. Sent it back right where it came from. At the plate, Kevin Kiermaier. In front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. As a look, now the pitch. Ball two. Had to sit back on the changeup, and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. A runner on first with two away. A full count to the Rays center fielder. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. Just hung in there on that one. Another full count pitch home. Is a wave and a miss. He struck him out. Ray's strand just the one. They're on the short end of a 4 nothing score. Just about set to go for the last of the fourth. But before we do that, here's Heidi Watney. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Twins to discuss his thoughts on Minnesota's lineup so far. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've already put four runs on the board, and they've done so by running up their opponent's pitch count. So he said he thinks they're going to have a lot more opportunities to score because of that as the game goes on. All right. Thanks, Heidi. Ready to go in the bottom of the fourth. And next will be a speed thread in the form of outfielder Byron Buxton. The 2-2. Line toward the alley in left center. And that'll get down out there near the wall. And the Twins have something brewing right away. It's a leadoff double. When you heard the crack of the bat, you just knew that was going to get down for an extra base hit. Great way to start an inning, that's for sure. Yeah. 
So now to the plate, Max Kepler. And he clearly couldn't make up his mind on that one coming in. A swing and a miss. Well, it's been a rough one so far. Four runs through three innings. It's about time to get that pitch count down or he won't be out here very long. Still one and two. Four runs, four hits, and no errors in the ballgame for Minnesota. And he swings on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. Yeah, you could tell he was ready for another fastball, but the pitcher went to breaking ball, and the hitter just fouls that one off. In the dirt, and now let's see. And he's going to make it up to third here as he advances on the wild pitch. That can be a tough read as a runner on second to see if the ball has gotten away enough to move to third. You have to be sure you can make it. He was there, and now he's only 90 feet away. Good battle here. This will be the seventh pitch coming up. Full count to Max Kepler. Three balls and two strikes. You can certainly tell at bats like this one frustrate the heck out of a pitcher. But you've got to find a way to stay composed and execute your plan. And it's fouled away. Neither guy given in. Here's the next one. Fouled away. Set. Here's the three and two. Hit hard back up the middle. And that's through into center field. Base hit. And they'll add another as this is now a 5 nothing game. Boy, this guy's having a great game here so far, Dero. Home run earlier in the night. And that base hit right there drives in his third run at the end of this game. Yeah, you drive to the park every day hoping your rhythm and timing is on point with that pitcher's windup. And that's exactly been the case today. He not only mixed in that big bomb, but now he's got three ribbies to boot. Breaking ball. That's in the dirt as he takes a ball. Now the three and two pitch. And swung on and missed strike three. A lot of indecision there on that check swing, and that's something you see quite a lot on three and two. When the difference between striking out and drawing a walk and can be an inch or two, it's pretty understandable why guys aren't always aggressive with their swings. The 2-1. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. And a good effort on the dive that time, but this will get by him for a base hit. And they'll have runners at the corners following the one-out single. The third baseman, number 24. Josh Fleming answers the call from the pen here in the fourth as they didn't get the outing they were hoping for from their starter. Number 64, Josh Fleming. Stepping in now, Josh Donaldson. All even now, two and two. Runners are at the corners with one man out. Rip down the line. But this is going to be a foul ball as that keeps things at two and two. Ah, had him fooled as he swings through the curveball. Two down. Now back. Digging in to try it again. Hit. Nelson Cruz yes, go for two for him to this Cruz. point. Looking to minimize the damage here. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Margo's on the move. He tracks it down, and that will end the inning. Twins forced to settle for one. On to the top of inning number five we go. It's the Twins five. The Rays nothing. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. 
Matt, race manager Kevin Cash talked to me in between innings about his lineup's offensive production, and he really emphasized that they're not doing a very good job capitalizing on run scoring opportunities. They've had their opportunities with runners in scoring position, but still have zero hits to show for it in those situations. He said repeatedly not coming through with the big hit can wear on you as a team, but in this sport, you have to dwell on the positives. He's confident they'll find a way to break through sooner or later. Okay, thank you, Heidi. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Not an easy pitch to lay off of, but he did somehow, and he's got it to three and one. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. That's in there, and it'll run the count to full three and two. That's a pitch he'd like to have back. You're not going to see very many pitches like that from a pitcher of this quality. I'm sure he'd like to have that one back to take a swing at it. Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and hit deep to left center. This one has a chance. Gone to lead off the inning. Manuel Margo leaves the yard with a solo shot. His first homer so far in the series. As they get on the scoreboard here, it's 5-1. Well, they're still down, but this homer right there might light a fire under the whole team. Give them a spark to climb back into this thing. We'll see if this gets them going. At the plate now, Mike Zanino. And he takes ball four. So a good job out of the nine hole in getting on base as we go back to the top of the order. That was a great battle right there. He tried to get him to chase, but he laid off some really tough pitches and got a walk. Got to tip the cap to the batter that time. Now back to the top of the lineup. Stepping in, Yandy Diaz. He's 0 for 2 thus far in this one. One one pitch a curveball that's right there one ball two strikes. Hey I don't mind that take right there that was a nasty breaking ball started outside the zone pop back inside the zone good spin rate on it move on to the next pitch and he fouls this one off. The one two hit out towards second the second for one on to first and they get the double play. When a glove toss is executed successfully, it's a thing of beauty. When it fails, boy, does it look ugly. Here we get to see a great example of it to begin a double play. Quick and accurate with the flip, and they get the two outs. So base is empty now after the double play. And standing in is the power-hitting second baseman, Brandon Lau. Ground ball sent back up the middle. Reined in. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as the side is retired. One for the Rays on the solo home run. On to the bottom of the fifth. It's the Twins five, the Rays one. Set now for the bottom of the fifth. And digging in is the outfielder, Eddie Rosario. Can't keep the weight back, and he falls behind one and two. Lays off two and two now.
chin high fastball that time ball three and just when you needed a shutdown inning a leadoff walk was certainly not on the agenda he needs a bear down right here the three two pitch swung on and he went fishing in the dirt Zanino gathers it and the throw is in time Rosario is retired and there's one away now back. Stepping up to the plate, Luis Arias. He's one for two in the ball game. And he lays off again, ball three. It's a 5-1 game here in inning number five. Popped him up. Adamas calls for it. Makes the play, and there are two gone now. At the plate, Miguel Sano. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Yeah, he's got to put that one behind him, especially with runners in scoring position. Those punch outs will stick with you a little longer. They'll whip this one to first in time, and that ends the inning. The Twins are set down one, two, three. They're up five to one. New inning set to get underway, and digging in next will be Joey Wendell. This one doesn't look good so far. Down by a boatload as we enter the middle innings. It's about time they get something going, and the last thing you want to do is fall behind where you have to score a bunch in the eighth and ninth inning. Count even at two and two. Doesn't offer at the circle change there, and it goes full three and two. What a great battle to start this inning. What a great job by the leadoff hitter. He knows that this pitcher's starting to get up there in pitches. The manager's starting to get restless. Let's see if we can knock him out and get into that bullpen. Fouled off. Once again, a 3 2. Down the first baseline. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again, three and two. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. It's been a rough night at the yard for him. That's now three that times he's gone down on strikes you. in this oh, one. Man. So they've really figured out how to attack this guy. In now, Austin Meadows. To first. He's got it. And the off balance throw beats him at first, and that's a tough play. Up next to the race, Yoshi Tsutsugo. Over two on his line thus far. Now the one and one pitch. We're in the sixth inning now of a five to one ball game. Hot shot to third. Donaldson's up with it. Throw to first will get him easily, and the side is retired. Down in order go the Rays. They're down here five to one. Bottom of the sixth inning now, and that'll bring up the speedy outfielder Byron Buxton. Side two and one. Action in the Rays' pen now as they've got a lefty and a right hander up and thrown. The two one. And good patience to hold back on the curveball in the dirt. It's full now. Three and two. And that one misses, so the leadoff man will head down to first on ball four to start the bottom of the sixth. That is not the way he wanted to start off this half inning. It's one thing to walk the leadoff hitter, but it's even more painful when the leadoff hitter is an absolute burner, and he can really wreak some havoc on the bases. 
Max Kepler will dig in again, and as he does, we'll flash you back to inning number two as you get a look at his two-run homer that was a big blow early on. Throw over to the bag, and he's back easily. Set and the 1 1 pitch. Boy, not exactly what you'd like as a pitcher. One of the keys is to minimize your pitches, attack the strike zone early, a lot of deep counts, and working himself into a lot of trouble. And a fastball, but he's losing it a bit here to 3 and 1 now. Got to find a way to get back in his zone. I know you're in danger of losing both to walks, but certainly don't miss over the heart of the plate and have this guy gap one, or even worse, hit a two-run homer. The three-and-one pick. And boy, that misses as well. It's back-to-back -back walks to start out the inning. Up next for Minnesota, the pitcher, Mitch. Ready for another chance. Mitch Garver becomes in 0 for 2 thus far. None out runners at first and second. Well hit. Deep down the right field line. And nearly a three-run shot. Instead, it's a foul ball. Hit sharply on the ground to the left. A dive, and he knocks it down. But the recovery will come too late, and the bases are loaded now. I got to be honest. I'm shocked he went back to this pitch again. First one, he was on it and fouled it off. Second one, he did not miss. Into the box, Jorge Polanco. A ball and two strikes now. Tight spot, bases loaded, nobody out. On the ground is short. This could be two. Adama scoops it up on the first, and it's a double play, although the run does come into score from third. The third baseman. A base is loaded. Last thing you want to do is ground into the double play, and that's just what he does. One run scores, but you don't get an RBI in that spot. That's a rally killer. Josh Donaldson will stand in here, but before he does, let's take you back to the very first inning. This was a two-run home run right out of the gate that really got these guys off to a fast start. one count moves to a ball and two strikes now and that misses two and two he's already walked two in this inning already this guy just can't seem to find the strike zone goes down and gets it as this has bounced to short Adamas brings it in throw in the dirt but a good scoop at first saves an error as this side is retired Twins forced to settle for one. On to the seventh here in game one. The Twins are in front, six to one. Tyler Clipper is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Number 36, Tyler Clipper. Seventh inning ready to roll, and up next will be Willie Adamas. It doesn't look very promising so far in this one as we move into the later innings. Down by a bundle, it's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long ball to get them back into this one. Two and one the count. He's fallen behind now, three and one. 
good job to work the count and put himself back in the driver's seat. Started off with one strike, and now he's got the count in his favor, three and one. Strike two as the fastball is let go. Uh, got him swinging on the split finger pitch, and that's out number one. Now Standing in, Kevin point. Kiermeyer. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. The 1 1 home. He swung on and missed for strike number two. One out, nobody on. Got him. And that's the third time we've written a K next to his name in this one. No problems for him on the mound since he's come out of the now pen that, to start this inning. That's back-to-back -back Ks, and he's making it look pretty easy. This has the makings of a good outing so far. To the plate now, Manuel Margo. A ball and two strikes now. I'll tell you, if I'm pitching right now, I'm not throwing anything near the strike zone until these guys prove they can lay off it. They're just being way too aggressive. Kepler will reach out with one hand to make the catch on the move, and that ends the inning. Rays go in order, one, two, three. They trail six to one. And that'll bring up the big stick of Nelson Cruz. Now the three and two pitch. He swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. It looked like this at bat had the makings of a leadoff walk when it started 3 0. So that's a good job not to give in and battle back to earn the strikeout. That's not always easy to do. At the plate, Eddie Rosario. And that one misses badly. It's ball two. Bases are empty. One man out. A bouncer up the middle. Adamas picks it up. And there's out number two. Sliding into the box. Luis Arias. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. Bases are empty here with two men out. Tough curveball that time, but he's able to make a little contact to keep this at bat going. The next 3 2. Hops this one up. And this will land foul. Lucky he got a piece right there. He was definitely late on that pitch after seeing a previous off speed pitch. And this one misses inside a ball. He walked him, and they've got themselves a two out base runner. Now batting. So the big bat of Miguel Sano digs in next. Hit hard on the ground is short. Adamas scoops it up, and as it turns out, the two-out walk doesn't come around to haunt him as that ends the inning. One left for Minnesota. They lead it six to one. Tyler Duffy has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 21, Tyler Duffy. Ready to begin the eighth, and that'll bring up the catcher, Mike Zanino. And he misses two and one. It's even now, two and two. Well executed fastball right at the knees. Going to be a long day for this offense if he stays in that spot. 
And he comes back with one down and in for ball three. It'd be great right here if he was able to work himself on base. You got the leadoff hitter on deck, and you know the middle of the order is coming up right behind him. Swing, and there it goes. Deep to left field. Gone all the way into the upper deck. It's a solo homer here for Mike Zanino. His first homer here in the series. As the lead is cut to four, it's six to two now. You're going to get one fastball right down the middle, probably once or twice a game, and you cannot miss it. And he did not miss it. He roasted that pitch. So now to the plate, Yandy Diaz. Count remains two and two. Now the pitch. Fastball didn't miss by much, and it's a full count now. Three and two. Brandon Lau waits on deck. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming up. And a fastball misses there, ball four. The bat, number eight. Striding in once again, Brandon Lau. He was a ground out victim last time up. Yeah, Matty, expect this pitcher to try and get the same result. That's his last at bat right here. The double play is in order. Anything on the ground, the way this defense is, they could certainly roll two. Two balls and a strike now. Now the 2 1 is fastball taken high for a ball. Joey Wendell will be next. A runner at first with no outs here. And he lays off there, ball four. So back to back walks have him in business here with nobody out. Right about now, the manager's questioning his decision to bring this guy in. If you can't trust a reliever to throw strikes, you can't trust him at all. We'll see if he comes to get him sooner than later. And that'll bring up Joey Wendell. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, but it was a good changeup, Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. No contact there, and it's one and two. First and second here with nobody out. Hit in the air out to left. Rosario is there. Looks it into his glove, and there's one gone. So with a left-handed hitter waiting, they'll go to their own left-hander out of the bullpen. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Now pitching for the twin. Number 72. Austin Meadows will be his first assignment here as he'll face him with runners at first and second and one gone. The 1-1 one, one. is in there for strike number two. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. First and second now, one man out. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Rosario is over just a few steps to his right as he takes it for route number two. Now back. Standing in, Yoshi Tsutsugo. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. The 3 1. There's a swing and he sends a ball high in the air into left field. So a three-run blast to straightaway left. And this will make things interesting at this point. It's now a 6-5 game.
Into the box now, Willie Adamas. A little behind on that swing, and now he'll try to shorten up maybe and protect the plate. Four runs here in this half inning. To two balls and two strikes now. Wave dad and missed for the third out. Not much of a chance at hitting that one, and the inning is over. So four runs in the inning, and they come on the strength of the two big flies. Home half of the eighth straight ahead. It's the Twins six, the Rays five. Chaz Rowe is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. So that will bring in Byron Buxton. He leads things off here in what's now a very close ball game. Ready on three and one. Here's the pitch. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. Rowe was known as a short relief specialist. A guy who came in, got one or two big outs. But with the new pace of play rules, they're forcing a change for this right-hander. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Meadows has it, and there's one away. Into the box, Max Kepler. Two hits and two trips for him thus far. Now the one and one pitch. Rowe is a guy known for his lights out stuff. He tends to rack up strikeout numbers at a very high rate. However, he does at times get wild. Walks have come back to bite him on more than one occasion. You know, it's not uncommon, Matty V, for a relief pitcher to come in with really good stuff. And it seems like he's either really hit and miss. He'll rack up a lot. And now Kepler belts one, carrying well out to right field. And this one will bounce into the wall. And he is in the second with a double, his third hit of the night. That was a great job of driving that ball, extending his arms very well, was able to get it over the right fielder's head, one hopping it off the wall for an easy double. That's one of those solid hits that you don't even feel coming off the bat. At the plate, Mitch Garver he has got a hit in three at-bats to this point. One out, one on, and a one-run game. One and two to the Twins catcher. This is going to be an interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strikeout here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. Ready to deliver the one and two. That misses, and we're even at two and two. Turned on down the line. Beautiful diving stop. Wow. Oh, that's just an excellent play that time. Super high degree of difficulty on that one. And as an added bonus, not only does he get the out at first, but he also keeps that runner stationed on second base. Ready once again, Jorge Polanco, runner in scoring position with Sugan. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. Counts even, two and two for Polanco. off the pitch off the plate and high three and two every base runner in a close game like this really matters so you can't afford to be giving out free passes this late he set the three two there's ball four the third baseman number 24 
Here's the third baseman, Josh Donaldson. And a big at bat in this one. Two on, two away here in the eighth. Two men are on with two men out. Strike three on a pitch in the dirt. And the throw to first ends the inning. Twin strand a pair as it remains a 6-5 ball game. Taylor Rogers comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Kevin Smith will pinch hit here, and he's the potential tying run. just to tick off there as this one's fouled off to the right. The one two. A shot down the first baseline. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. And hey, now if the first baseman is playing straight up there, that's probably a double down the line. But in order to prevent that late in the game, they had him guarding the line, and it obviously worked out perfectly. Digging in, Manuel Margot comes in one for two with that home run he hit earlier. A 1 1 home. Belted high in the air out to left. Looking up is Rosario. That one is out of here. This game is tied. Solo shot here to left, and we are tied again. Standing in now, Mike Zanino. Uh, got him on a good slider there. Swung on and missed as he's down on strikes for the second time tonight. We know he's probably still thinking about that game-tying home run he just gave up. But I'm going to give him credit for not showing that it's bothering him. When you come back and strike out the next guy, it shows you've still got your head in the right place. At the plate now, Yandy Diaz. Fly ball out toward left center field. Center fielder on the run. He's there to track it down, and that'll end the inning. But the Rays are able to knock things up on the solo home run. That'll set the stage for the bottom of the ninth. And we're all even now at 6-6. Six and six. Colin Poche enters to do the pitching, and best-case scenario for him is to push this one into extra innings. Okay. Hunter Renfro is into the ball game now as he assumes duties in center field. Hunter Renfro. Now to the plate, Nelson Cruz. He was sat down on strikes in his last at bat. Sometimes you just got to tip your cap to the guy on the mound. He's getting paid to try and get you out as well. Anytime it gets up there, north of seven, eight pitch ABs. Sometimes it just comes down to pure execution. Let's see if he makes the adjustment right here. The one two is a wave and a miss. He struck him out.
Digging in once again, Eddie Rosario. Struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. A 1 1 home. Now, action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. The 2 1. And it's fouled away. The 2 2. Fouled away. He struck him out the third time he's fanned in the game. The next twin up, Luis Arias. It was a walk in his last trip. Ready with the 2 1. Hit weakly on the ground to short. Oh, and he can't pick it up cleanly. And they'll have no play as he reaches first base safely. So chalk that one up as an E6, and he really can't believe it out there. Striding in, Miguel Sano. He's got a chance to end this one and send these fans home happy if he can get a ball deep enough into the gap. And that's upstairs, running the count to three and one. Possible winning run stands at first with two out here. And that misses ball four. So now the potential winning run moves into scoring position where a single could end this thing. He did not want to let the hitter off the hook with two outs. And now he's got a runner in scoring position to deal with. So a big moment in the ball game here. Byron Buxton as he'll look to get the ball into the outfield and bring home what would be the winning run from second base. The one and one pitch. All two. Hey, lots of guys get too aggressive in a spot like this, but he's done a nice job of gaining some count leverage. Look for him to put the ball and play hard. Two and one, here it is. And he can't catch the corner here, so he's behind three and one. Three and one here, you have to make a good pitch on the mound. Grooving one here rarely works in your favor unless the hitter tries to do too much with it. Three and one, here it is. Ball four, and that will move the winning run over to third base now, just 90 feet away. That's a big no-no. He obviously had to work carefully with two men on, but he did not want to walk him to load the bases. Now he's really got his work cut out for him. We'll see how he fares here. Max Kepler the next to grab a bat. And it looks like this could be a critical at-bat in this one. Well, a glance at my scorebook shows they haven't been able to get him out yet. So this could be a fun at-bat to watch. The set and the 1-1. One -one. High in the air down the right field line. But this is just going to wind up being a foul ball. And he strikes him out. So a missed opportunity at the plate as he strands three runners and the side is retired. So they can't get that winning run home and that means we'll have to go a little longer tonight to find a winner. Nine can't decide a winner. We'll move ahead to the tenth. And we are all even at six apiece. We are into extra innings and that'll bring in the second baseman Brandon Lau. 1-1. You know, what I'm seeing here is a reluctance to throw the fastball. It's like he feels he can't throw the ball right by him right now. Gets the sign. Here comes the 2-1. Weak grounder down the line at third. Scooped up, and he'll reach first as they can't make the play on him. I know he didn't smoke that one from the offensive standpoint, but you know what? A knock's a knock, especially to lead off an inning. Game tied, and it's getting late. That could prove to be pivotal.
to the plate now. Joey Wendell. Now a bunt attempt here, but a foul ball. One and two the count now. Now about a 58-foot breaking pitch that he wisely lays off here. Yanked the slider across that time, laid off for a ball. Hey, that's a nice take by the batter right there, but that's a non-competitive off-speed pitch. Got to do better to at least entice a swing. Now the three and two pitch. Grounded up the first baseline. Ready with another two-strike offering. Lifted in the air out to right. Kepler's there for it, and he hauls it in for the first out of the inning. In now, Austin Meadows is one away. The runner at first represents the potential go-ahead score. Double play is in order, however. He's fallen behind now, three and one. Yoshi Tsutsugo is on deck. The 3-1 pitch. Seared down the first baseline. But a foul ball, and it's full now at 3-2. and two. Now the 3-2 and two pitch. Slider in there for a called third strike, and there are two gone now. The plate now for the Rays is the DH. Yoshi Tsutsugo. There are two gone, and the possible go ahead run at first. Yeah, Matt, and going back to that last at bat when he hit the homer, that was a fastball that was up in the zone. This guy likes the ball up in the zone, so if I'm on the mound right now, I'm thinking try to keep the ball at the knees and below. He doesn't handle that low pitch quite as well. From the stretch, the one-two. This is pulled into right. In there, a base hit. And that's going to move that go-ahead run to second now with two gone. Hey, that's nice execution right there. Swung through the first slider, got it again, stayed tall, kept his hands back, didn't try and do too much, and delivered a nice base hit. Matt Wisler trots in from the bullpen here as he inherits a tough spot with two on and two away. Stepping in now, Willie Adamas in there for a called strike, three and two now. Two down, runners at first and second. And he gets him to pop it up on the right side of the infield. And the two-out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. Rays strand a pair. Weir still tied six and six. Trevor Richards comes on to start the home 10th, and he's just hoping to get this one into the 11th inning. Ready for the bottom of the 10th here, and stepping in the long ball threat, Mitch Garver. Into the windup, here's the 2 and 1 pitch. Line drive to left. Margo is right there as he puts it away. No problem for the first down. Well, he hit that ball pretty well, but the only problem was that he pulled off it just a bit. The location was a little on the outer half, so he would have hit it even better if he would have stayed through the middle of the field with it. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Jorge Polanco, he comes into this appearance in the midst of a one-for-four day. One out, nobody on. Hit softly down the line at first. But a foul ball, one and two now. As anticipated, here's a ground ball now to the right side. And there are two away now. Ready now, Josh Donaldson. He went down on strikes last time up. 
Two out, nobody on. Into the corner and slicing foul. One, two is the cut fastball, but he holds back two and two. A drive to left. Get out of here. Get out of here. Gone. They win it. Santa Maria. A solo shot here to left. And none bigger than that one as this ball game is over. season always seems to deliver big moments and this was no exception a walk off in the final at bat ends it and there's bedlam at home play wow No better time of year to come up big for your team than in the postseason. And that's exactly what this man did. He's our top player of the game. Yeah, no time like the postseason to come through and lift your team to victory. He was certainly a big factor here, and it was pretty cool to see. Tight one, seven to six, the final score tonight. The Twins jump out to a one nothing series lead. Matt Wisler is credited with the win. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, and our entire crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to theshownation.com. The final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious Twins: seven runs on nine hits, no errors. They left 11 men on base. For the Rays, six runs, eight hits, two errors. They left six men on base. Time of the ball game: three hours.